Hello, it's Dr. Macho for Heart and Lungs Focused Ultrasound. In the last few lectures, we were talking about diastolic dysfunction, grade 2 and grade 3. We were talking about several measurements you have to acquire to differentiate in between diastolic dysfunction, grade 2 and indeterminate. Now it is time to continue with diastolic dysfunction, grade 1, where you won't find elevated filling pressures. In this case, you have several situations. First of all, if two of the three criteria we discussed before, so the average E to E prime above 14, the TR velocity above 2.8 meters per second, and the left atrial volume index above 34 milliliters per square meter are not fulfilled, it means you do have diastolic dysfunction grade 1 in case, and now we have to move up to the E to A ratio of the mitral valve inflow, an E to A ratio above 0.8 until below 2. Remember, above 2 or 2 means restrictive filling patterns, so diastolic dysfunction grade 3. Or we have an E to A ratio below or 0.8 plus the maximal E velocity of 50 centimeters per second. So if you evaluate those three criteria and two are not fulfilled, you have diastolic dysfunction grade 1. Another case of diastolic dysfunction grade 1 in the mitral valve inflow would be an E to A below or 0.8 plus an E below or 50 centimeters per second. If you have this scenario, it's automatically diastolic dysfunction grade 1 in patients with a sick left ventricle, sick left heart. Let's take a look at an example. You see it over here. We have here an E to A ratio of below 0.8 or 0.8. In this case, the maximal E velocity, which is the first of those two curves, so the lower curve, is below 50 centimeters per second. You can see it here. It's just a little bit below 50 centimeters per second, and it's a rather small E wave and a rather large A wave. This is already diastolic dysfunction, grade 1. Overall, there are some more parameters you can distinguish or you can measure. It's the deceleration time, which is in the range of 140 to 240 milliseconds. Another thing you can measure is the isovolumic relaxation time, the IVRT, and it's in the range of uh, 70 millimeters per second. Keep in mind that this is a rather difficult measurement, but you can try it if you want to and stick to those known values. Another situation, when you see, for example, an L wave, it does mean that there are very likely elevated filling pressures, and you can also interpret the pulmonary vein flow signal. In this example, you have two more parameters or two more signs you can look at. If you see a dilated left atrial appendage, as seen in the right side of the image, and the right side of the slide, you see that the left atrial appendage on the very right side is dilated. Here you can see it that points towards elevated filling pressures. And on the left hand side, you see the E to E prime ratio of this patient was 20. So definitely pathological. And in this case, you nicely see an L wave. The L wave is a wave in between the E and the A wave. Over here, you can see it quite nicely. This is the so-called L wave. In case you see an L wave, elevated filling pressures are very likely. To continue with the pulmonary vein flow signal, this is also a very complicated measurement. Sometimes you can measure several things. You can measure the AR to A duration above 30 milliseconds, the peak reversal flow, so the AR per se, and the reduction of S to D. And if that is one, it's pathological. So what does this all mean or how would you measure it in TE, it's quite often possible to measure it if you know how to do. In TTE, I would say it's often not possible. Very often it's just not easy to get those kind of measurements, to get this signal. You would delineate the apical 4 chamber view and at the roof of the left atrium you see the pulmonary veins entering. In specific it would be the right upper pulmonary vein where you would often get this signal or most likely get this signal but still it's very very complex and you have to try several times even in patients which are optimal to scan. How does it look like or how does the mitral valve inflow signal and the pulmonary venous signal look like in the echocardiogram? You can see that the pressures on the left hand side are normal. You see the normal E to A ratio. You have the IVRT at the beginning. You have the pulmonary venous flow signal. You have the systolic flow and the diastolic flow. 
and you have the mitral annular velocity, the E prime and the A prime. You can see that the isovolumic relaxation time over time in impaired relaxation, as it was called before the new guidelines, the pseudonormal or the restrictive feeling pattern. So basically it's grade three diastolic dysfunction in a restrictive feeling pattern that the IVRT is becoming relatively short. The S2D ratio differs, so in healthy individuals you have a higher systolic versus the diastolic measurement and the higher the feeling pressures are, the lower the systolic measurement will get and the higher the diastolic measurement will get and if you have an S2D ratio mentioned before of 1, it's considered pathological. Furthermore, you can see the AR time, so the reversal flow of the pulmonary venous signal, it becomes higher the more the feeling pressures are elevated. But you can see in this diagram that all those measurements are very complex and you really have to have nice signal to differentiate all those patterns.